Hi, my friends, this is Lada from astrolada.com with your August 2018 astrology horoscopes for the 12 signs. What a crazy summer! You're probably experiencing it already. It's intense with all the eclipses, with Mars and Mercury retrograde. They continue in August. This is the last very intense month of this year, very karmic, very fated. But this is also the last month when you can turn your life around and when you can make big changes in your life. So don't miss this time. Yes, it's intense, it's difficult, no one likes changes. Well, not no one, but most of the times. But you can make something amazing. You know, it can be extremely productive and transforming month. And of course, one of the most important events is that we have the solar eclipse, which is happening on the 11th of August in the sign of Leo. It's with Rahu. Solar eclipse is about new beginnings, guys. Especially with Rahu, Rahu is material in nature when a Rahu causes a solar eclipse, which means it will bring some tangible material new beginnings in your life over the next six months in a different area of your life depending what sign you are we'll speak about that and some big changes in that area of your life it's one of the last ch chances to make a big new beginning in that area of your life where the one of the last new eclipses is happening there so important time yes it can be unsettling it can be scary because you're entering into uncharted new territory uh, and everything new feels scary but at the same time you know maybe you're overdue for a change there at the same time, we have Mars and Mercury retrograde. And Mars is extremely close to the Earth. You can see it uh, when it rises on the western horizon at night, like a bright, red, angry star. And sometimes I would confuse it even for a plane. It's so bright. And when Mars is so close, all the fire in us increases. So we become uh, much more you know, kind of uh, retrograde planet, many astrologers say, oh, it's not going to work at all. You know, you're not going to have any ambition, any drive. No, no, no. Retrograde planet pushes you the limits and Mars is about willpower, drive. And of course, with all that fire, we can, it can misfire. You know, we can be, uh, we can create conflict. We can be more prone to accidents, to burns, to cuts, more prone to fighting with people that have longer consequences. But this fire is given to us to make something out of it and in particular to actually to make some feat of courage because mars rules courage something that you not have the energy or the will to do at other times because mars is so much stronger some feat of courage some feat of assertiveness some feat of uh, strength that you can achieve some feat of physical or other kind of energetic strength some feat of um uh, yeah, so something that you can use this willpower, feet of willpower. And, but again, as I said, too much fire can overpower rationality and we can do some um, uh, too passionate actions that we later regret for. But I would advise you use this fire to fix some problem in your life, to use this willpower and this assertiveness to tackle issues that you haven't had the courage or strength to do before. This is what retrograde planets are about. And try not to succumb to the temptation to fight, to, to retaliate, to bicker, uh, to, to be overly dramatic you know and be careful for little accidents as well but the ultimate goal of mars retrograde is much more positive uh, and we'll speak about each sign where it is happening and it's actually going in capricorn uh, and it's turning direct only in the last two days of month of august so it's mostly retrograde the whole august and then you have mercury retrograde till the 19th of august and mercury is about communication about talking about information so you might have to be um working on something using three times more of your skills which what mercury rules three times more of your communicative abilities of your ability to uh, you know to explain things of your ability to use your hands or your mind or your skills in some way it's more challenging when a planet is retrograde because we have to use three times more energy so maybe some of you will be using three times more energy and skills to fix uh, some uh, communicative errors some administrative errors uh, to organize to manage to prepare something, to put final touches, to uh, complete some mercurial projects, which are of the mind, of writing, of speaking, of communicating, of business, business commercial transactions. Uh, so you're fixing something there while Mercury is retrograde till the 19th. 
And of course, we have, though, a lot of support as well, because we have Jupiter in, amidst all those difficult influences, the solar eclipse, Mercury and Mars retrograde. You have two very beneficial influences. So the universe is kind to us. It doesn't just, you know, burden us with one after another difficult influences. It, it gives us a helping hand. And one of them is the Jupiter trine Neptune. The whole month it is active. The whole month they're within a degree from each other, from the um, orb, and they're happening in water signs, extremely healing influence. I've given some keywords. Easy flow, we'll speak about each sign where you're going to experience this easy flow, this healing, help from somewhere, divine help it might be almost like, divine inter intervention, something happening by magic, spirituality, uh, healing, kindness, tolerance, you can experience all those things. It's very emotionally soothing. It's very, it kind of gives you a sense of happiness within, in certain areas of your life. And things happening like by magic. And there, then there is another trine, very rare one, between Uranus and Saturn, which is active the whole August again in Earth signs this time. And Earth signs are material. Uh, material manifestation. So in certain other areas of your life, you'd have groundingness, you'd have productive results, material results. You're going to have uh, easy material results because it's an easy aspect. And you're going to have, um, you're going to build up something new on top of something old, strengthen old foundations by incorporating something new and uh, that is not going to destroy old foundations in your life. It's just going to build up upon them. So we do have some help. And now let's see how it is going to uh, affect each of the 12 signs. So Libra, whether it's your Libra rising, which is the most important, Libra moon, the second in importance, or Libra sun, the third in importance. How is the eclipse going to affect you? Let's start with the eclipse and Mercury retrograde in your 11th house. Well, let's start with Mercury retrograde. Till the 19th of August, Mercury is retrograde in your 11th house of friendships, which means that someone from the past that you haven't seen, some friends or acquaintances, you can get reconnected to them. Uh, you can see them, you know, get in touch. You can hear from friends you haven't heard. Uh, you can reach out to them as well uh, on, another, on another level and have fun because it's in Leo on another level if there is something unsaid between you and friends or people in your basically social circle uh, that you've been wanting to say but you've been bottling it Mercury retrograde can escalate that and you might have to speak up now because Mercury is very close to the earth and it does not want you to bury stuff it wants to bring stuff from the past that can no longer be kept under there, you know, under the carpet. Or it can be friends of yours that they might say, well, you, you never get in touch with me. There can be some kind of a blow up, even if there is uh, some unbalanced, unfair situation. So it can be corrected. Mercury retrograde periods is to correct the communication uh, uh, in whatever house is transiting. And for you, it's with social, with uh, your social circle, like-minded people, uh, groups of people. You might be even groups that you belong on, on the internet, that you're a member of some, like, like the Astrolada group, for example, <laughs> and you speak up there or something, you know. Uh, but on another level, we have a new moon solar eclipse in the 11th house as well. And solar eclipse, it's on the 11th of August in your 11th house, and it's with Rahu. This is Rahu. It's not something else. You know, this is the symbol of Rahu. And the next such eclipse will be in your, in your life again, in your 11th house, from Libra sign in another 18 years. So it's very rare to have a solar eclipses uh, they happen for about a year and a half. You've been having a few solar eclipses in your 11th house already, but it's one of the, I think it's probably the last one. The last one is next year, but it's at the zero degrees there. So it's almost in the previous sign. So this is, I would say, like the last important uh, and chance from now till February to make a big change in your life in regards to friendships and in regards to your social circle. And even though now in August, some, some, someone from the past, you're getting reconnected and stuff like that, clarifying some things. Also, though, this eclipse is opening opportunities for fated new friendships, for very important friendships. They might often, when friendships are created, 
uh, around the year when there is eclipses in the 11th house, they can stay for many years in your life. They kind of remember eclipses are fated, uh, they are ca kind of more karmic, and the North Node eclipses, they bring something new. They bring something, materialize it. So you can find new mentors, not mentors, benefactors as well. Uh, you can become, over the next six months, because an eclipse lasts for six months, you can become a member of new groups, of new social circle, change totally your social circle. There can be big changes in the life of your friends. And the 11th house is one's social economic goals. It's a very uh, kind of opportunistic house where uh, we want recognition, where we want to be noticed by the... Uh, crowd where we want uh, to be recognized is the house of titles and honors is the house that we receive say uh, a, like a doctor degree or a PhD or a engineer you know kind of title and honors so you might start on a new path over the next six months uh, unless you've started already because of the previous eclipses in your 11th house with Rahu um, but you can start on a new such path uh, to take a new title in your life or that you create a new social economic goal of significant importance and very um, you know so your social goals can change and your economic goals can change the 11th house is the house of gains so they can be big changes sometimes even they can shake us up a little bit but that puts you in a new path to look for new connections through new for new networks um, and for new uh, and that makes you build new goals in life as well. All right. And these will be material, especially opportunistic and ambitious goals, because Rahu is part of this new um, new uh, uh, solar eclipse. And Rahu is material and opportunistic in nature. It's not going to be goals like, oh, I want to connect with God in the next, you know. No, no, no. It's going to be like, uh, I want to be a member of this society. I want to have that much money in my bank account. I want to be a millionaire by this time or whatever, you know, something like that. Or I want to be a doctor by this time. And uh, actually it can create some new, very important uh, business economic project in your life over the next six months that can open new horizons for you for many years ahead. All right. On another level, uh, you have very helpful influences as well, which is Jupiter trine Neptune in your material houses, the second and the sixth Libras. Second house, the house of sensual enjoyments, good food, good drink. The sixth house is the house of um, keeping our health. <laughs> so how is that going to play out? Well, second house is what we put in our mouth. Sixth house is trying to make, stay healthy. So sixth house will be all the diets we do, all the health routines that we do, uh, just to try to, you know, um, to try to keep that amazing creation, our body running longer. So because there is an easy aspect, easy flow, they can be almost like magical, easy transition into very healthy eating, for example. Because second house is what we put in the body, the food. Sixth house is taking care of the body, uh, the routines, the exercises. And because the planets are not planets of exertion, actually, Neptune and Jupiter, and the aspect is very gentle, you're not going to feel like, All right now, okay, I'm going to start exercising every day. I'm going to have, you know, it's it's not going to feel like that. It's going to be more like, like, a very gentle transition into, hmm, I feel like taking care more of my body. I love my body more. I'm going to feed you banana now instead of, uh, you know, mozzarella stick. It's almost going to feel like your uh, subconscious choices veer more towards taking a bit better care of your body somehow. And sixth house is also the house of addictions. And second house, what we put in our body usually you know, <laughs> they are very kind of connected. So there can be some gentle healing in regards to certain addictions connected with food or substances that we ingest. But because it's a very lazy aspect as well, the trines are very, not very lazy, you can have easier access to such substances. <laughs> and hopefully what I also said is because this kind of the, the need to do more self, the, um, the natural inspiration to do more self-care um, and to choose better things for you will veer you away because otherwise on a negative scale this can actually open the door to indulging without any repercussions 
but if you decide to get sloshed and drunk or <laughs> to really overdo with foods and kind of poisonous substances <laughs> and stuff or mind altering because it is a trine there won't be two negative consequences and it's gonna it's gonna feel like pleasant you know but if you decide to do uh, and if you kind of the choice is to focus on more healthy ways it will also happen without effort and exertion on another level these are material houses second house is money six house is work and debt so there can be some improvement of a debt for you maybe pay off a debt uh, and it will happen smoothly and easily maybe help that you can receive financially somehow as well and maybe uh, w the work that you've been doing six house can now you can receive some reward financially or materially for that you know and it happens again magically uh, you know um, gently uh, and you receive help either through through work or through resource for resources as well uh, easy flow between money and work uh, all right so on another level we have another you have another the whole month very positive aspect happening in your fourth house between Saturn and in your eighth house with where Uranus is and these are two very emotional houses and Saturn and Uranus are in earth signs which are very grounding so there will be stabilizations of your mental state because the fourth house rules our emotional state sorry of, of how we uh, how happy we feel how emotionally grounded and stable we feel in our everyday life uh, and the eighth house is the house of trauma and the house where we keep the pain so Uranus there something will break away from some of your pain suddenly some sudden realization or something it can even happen in a subconscious way that makes you happier that makes you more grounded also Saturn being the fourth house possibly a lot of your liberals are having heavy responsibilities with family or home or parenting tasks or heavy responsibilities towards parents or towards property or landed properties and, and now Uranus will take away some of this burden in August. They will be, you'll receive some help from others because eighth house is um, assets or resources, moral, financial, emotional that we receive from others. So some new support can come to you that relieves some of the burden in regards to you to home duties, whether it's cleaning the home or help with the children or help with parenting. Or maybe you can also eighth house is the house where you can uh, get some kind of... Um, uh, loan from other people's money for example like bank or something that can help you uh, get a property that can help you that if for example you always wanted to build your house and now some new opportunity Uranus appears that flows very well with your already with your already established plans in regards to doing something with your family or settling somewhere else or building property and because of this new financial help or resources you can implement that goal now or start on it somehow but also it can be like a, uh, another way it can play out is um, hmm, yeah I can't think <laughs> more intimacy uh, more emotional intimacy uh, with family members as well and as I said the eighth house is the house of trauma so Uranus can suddenly awaken us to something that we've locked in our subconscious that's been bugging us that allows for more happiness overall um, also yeah so that's I think how it can play out some more stabilization in the family new opportunities that come with the family as well uh, all right and stabilization or something good happening like you can receive something materially the jupiter neptune trine jupiter is in the second house you can receive something that you want uh materially that makes you happy that is valuable as well uh, and the sixth house is the house of death actually and the trine between jupiter and neptune can maybe kind of relieve some of your debt as well if you if you're going that direction so anyway thank you so much uh, and yeah what else if, if you are working in any of those fields second fourth sixth or eighth house fields this can be a very good month so if you're working with money food or resources uh, can be a very good month uh, if you're working in the medical field it can be a very good uh, medical or service fields like the military army 
um, debt collectors as well can be a very good smooth month if you're working in property or real estate or nurseries or taking care of the elderly or the young again can be a very good month if you're working with other people's resources in emergencies eighth house so in occult sphere so if you're a psychologist again very good stabilizing month so thank you so much libras and i will see you next month after the eclipse